So this is our Google SketchUp demo for today. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and other programs that you might be interested in if um, you really take a liking to this process, like Blender. But anyway, it's good to learn the basics. This program's really user-friendly, easy to learn, and all you need is a mouse. So this is the Blender interface up here. Sorry, uh, Google SketchUp interface right here. And what I'm going to show you first is these two move tools so that you know how to move the camera around as you're working. This one is really handy. It's called the Orbit tool. And if you click and hold down, you can move all around. You can sort of orbit around this little um, character that gives you a sense of scale. You could even switch that character out with whatever. You know, you can make up your own or you can um, put in some other character. This next tool, which is right next to Rotate or Orbit, is the Pan tool. It looks like a hand. And what you can do with the Pan tool is it, um, in camera terms or filming terms, it tilts and pans the camera. So it moves from side to side and up and down. And it's very useful because um, sometimes, say you're over here, you're working on something, and you're using the other tool, the orbit tool, and you're just trying to get a good view of your three-dimensional object, make sure you know nothing's wrong, there are no errors. But then you can't really move around, you can't really go far off to the right. You can only look at what you have, you know, sort of right in front of you. So that's when you'll use the, the pan tool. Then you can move all the way over here and up and down. And finally, the third tool, um, camera tool that's really not up there, is your mouse wheel. So you use your mouse wheel, roll in and out to zoom in and out. So that's how you basically move around in the program. And I'm showing you this program because I want you to be able to uh, construct things, uh, objects, buildings, um, vehicles, and all sorts of things that you'll need in your pieces uh, that you don't necessarily have a reference of. And with this program, you can get some really, really good reference material that you can light with you know, the sun. You can create cast shadows and things, um, just like you know, almost any other 3D program. But it's a, it's a little simpler. It's almost like drawing in 3D. So what I'm going to do is show you how to start. Let's start with the pencil tool, for instance. And the pencil tool is either line or freehand. So line is pretty interesting because you, know, you could just start by drawing out a line. And you could tell which axis it's on because while you're drawing, it shows you a certain color. So while we were drawing that, you see the green there. So that's the axis. And usually when you want to check to see where you drew that line, if you're not familiar with the program, you can use the orbit tool. Okay, so we see that the first line is drawn on the ground plane and the second line is right beneath it. <clears throat> so what we can do now is go back to the pencil. You can even zoom in to make it a little easier. And then connect this shape. It's very easy. It's like drawing. It's like connecting lines on paper. So this is something I also show to my illustration students in their intro to illustration class. So now those two lines are connected. And you can even look at that without clicking off the pencil button. You can even look at that like this, with the orbit tool. Or you can you know, pan over to this side and just finish up the other connection. And this shows you pretty much the, the way this program works. Once you connect the lines and make a shape, it fills in the shape for you and fills in a plane, like a polygon. So now we filled in a shape in a plane. 
and that's our first shape. So there are many ways to make shapes. You could even switch over to these set of tools, rectangle, rotated rectangle, circle, and polygon, to make a shape that's a lot faster. If you, use, you know, need to start something with a very basic shape. So you click, hold down, and then expand, and then you have your shape. In this case, we have a polygon, hexagon. So that's also on the ground plane. And now, what we can do is make all sorts of other shapes, of course, rectangle, circle, etc. But the best thing about this program, and, and what really, really speeds things up and makes this a quick process for you guys, is the push and pull tool, which is right here, right next to those shape tools. And with the push and pull tool, you can do just what it says, push or pull these objects. So now you see that we already have the beginning of a building or a tower or some sort of skyscraper with these three objects. Maybe a, a circus tent or something like that. Or even um, if you shrink this down to a smaller scale, it could be uh, you know, nuts and bolts type of object. In which case, you just draw a circle in the middle of it. Right here. And then you'd use the same tool, the push and pull tool, to push that down. So now we have something that's a, a giant size you know, nut or piece of hardware. The other great thing about this is um, a lot of you guys are interested in comic books and even if you're not you'll be doing illustrations and designs of cities and cityscapes and backgrounds. One of the other techniques I show my illustrators is the really quick and easy way you could make city blocks and city shapes. Urban architecture. So you just make a bunch of squares like this. keeping city blocks in mind and streets and alleyways. Different building shapes and city grids. Maybe this is sort of like a Times Square setup. So I'll make a couple more. And now we see, after pulling these up, how easy it is to just make a simple little skyline or cityscape with basic shapes that can be you know, modified or embellished or made into other more complex building type shapes. So let's zoom out now and just look around and you see that it's very easy to make a sort of cityscape. So if our character, for instance, if we're doing like a comic book cover or something or comic book panel, if our character is over here, maybe in the foreground on another building, far away, then we could take that viewpoint after drawing this shape, zooming in, tilting up, and then we could draw our character here. We could print this out, we could trace it, or we could just keep it up on the screen and look at it as reference, and we have almost like a you know, a Batman setup where Batman is standing on the, 
the edge of this building or right here on the building and there's a cityscape in the background where you can always add all sorts of other buildings. We even have the horizon line which is where the green meets the blue and a very very quick way to render a cityscape. And if you want to get a little more complex you can use the next tool which is called offset and let's just use a little bit of that so you can see what I mean here. With offset you'll see a little red square usually telling you that it's on the edge and then if you click and hold down on that you can bring a line from the border and then bring it back in and then you could manipulate that with other tools as well. So you can make a, a little more of a complex building or at least the start of it and then what you can do is maybe you want this part of the building to be more like a pyramid or a ziggurat. You take the line tool and you connect endpoint lines really simply making triangles at the edges. So what I'm going to do is make three more of those triangles and you can see that while I'm working on this they're already starting to fill in. And this is why we need both of the, the movement tools, the orbit and the tilt pan. Then I'll draw one here, orbit around, and we have a building that has more of like a trapezoidal top. So that's what that is. And then there are other tools like the movement tool, the rotate tool, the scale tool, and to make things a different scale. And now we have the tape measure. Let's say you're doing windows. So let's move down here. I want to make some windows. So we take this ruler tool and we line it up with the edge here. And then we have these ruler lines up here and you could basically use those on any surface as you see here so the reason for that is maybe you want to line up things like maybe there's a set of doors or windows or something that you want to line up so what we're going to do is Let's zoom in. Ooh, got a little too close there. Let's zoom in on, let's say, this little building. And we're going to make some basic windows, and then I'm going to show you how to make some Lancet windows. So online, on the line, we're going to make some windows. Sometimes it gets a little tricky, in which case you want to make your lines yourself. So there we have a little window and what you can do is also push and pull that that window. If you want to make something like a lancet window, what you do is switch to this tool, again, which is what we use to make the buildings, the rectangular tool, and then we push it in, see? But let's hit Command Z, just like in Photoshop, and not go too far. We need to make the Lancet part of the window, which is this tool. It's the Arc Tools set. So usually I, I select a two-point arc if I'm going to make a Lancet window what you do with that 
is click, hold, click from left to right, just like I did. And you can either make like, you know, an Arabic style window, or you can go all the way down and snap to a half circle or symmetrical and it's at window top. And you click again and then it's made. And then what I can do now is go to the, the very basic selection tool and select this line, which I don't want. And then I can just hit delete on the keyboard. So it's very easy to select lines, shift select multiple lines, and then just select things and delete them. You can delete planes as well. Like I can delete this one as well if I want. So that one's deleted. You can see through it right here. But what I want to show you is just, again, you can use the push-pull tool to make a little window there. That's a very easy way to do it. And then you can even select the, win the entire window and just duplicate it. So there's not too many tools, but you can do so much with each and every tool. You can even color certain things. But I mostly want to show you this because of it's it's you know just power and what it can do and its capability. It's a very small program. It's free and it's easy to use. It doesn't take up hardly any room on your computer, and it's very quick download. So we're gonna get rid of that. And eventually, uh, in a minute, in a minute, I'm gonna show you some examples of what I've done with it and how I use it in my artwork as well. Um, this is very, very easily used in digital media. Like you can take this, import it into Photoshop, or just bring up the image that's saved on your desktop of this, and then you can paint right over it. One of the last things I wanna show you is how to make a cone, for instance. So let's go back to our circle over here by moving around to the other side and then zooming in more closely to our circle, which is right here. So I'm going to pull that up and then I'm going to rotate over here or orbit over here and draw. It'll pretty much snap to a grid when you use certain tools like the pencil tool. And that's what you want. So sometimes you won't see a center line. Most times you will. And if you don't, just draw a grid and then click on the center line and draw up the blue axis, making sure that your line goes up. And then you can start dividing these lines down here. This is the, the very start of the, the cone, part of the demo. So I'm going to click at this endpoint just so that I don't have you know, too much dragging around, or this one. I want to further divide this into these radiating little arcs. So that's good enough for now. We can, we can actually add more polygons to it later. But I just want, just want to show you the basic idea. So then you grab this endpoint from the line you just drew. You draw it to there. You grab this endpoint. You draw it up to there. This one, draw it to there. And continue with the entire object all the way around, connecting those points here, there, there. And now we zoom in. We can take the pencil and just connect these lines. Very easily, as you see here. And I'll show you how you can work back into the polygons and make them look smoother even. So 
So let's check that from above. It's looking good. Now if I add more lines, like a line here and a line there, we get an even smoother transition. And a better sense of curvature in that cone or turret. That we had before. So I would do that all the way around and then you basically have a turret shape that you can light. And what you want to do is click on window when you're ready to light things and go to shadows. There's all sorts of little tricks and things like fog but now, shadows is most important because we're using this again as, refer as reference so we're going to click on use sun for shading and what you can do is change the time of day and time of year choose, choose the date move that around and now we've very quickly lit our piece you can change the light change the dark can make it really, really, really dark, really light, high contrast. It's usually good to stay in this range. Let me click off of that, and now we have that lighting, the universal lighting in our piece, in our three-dimensional space. And if we move around, you see that you know, these planes are lit differently because the sun is coming from here, the sunlight and the light source. So that's more or less how you use the program. And if you want to get really, really free with the program, you can select freehand, which is part of the line tool set. And you can just you know, start drawing freehand. Maybe you want to draw like a series of cliffs or something. So that's what I'd recommend doing after you sort of get a good idea, a good grasp of how to construct these shapes, these simple building shapes and things like that. Because now, you know, with this, we can make all sorts of cliffs and things. And we could select this tool, which basically moves it around in space. And you can do that to anything. Not just an entire object, but, you know, a certain side of the object. And it'll snap back in place as needed. The move tool even you know, does a little bit of the push-pull for you, so that's a little more convenient. So that's about it. Those are the basic tools in Google SketchUp. And if you get really, really good at Google SketchUp and you want to start developing other techniques and start making models to rig and animate and making just more refined models, more detailed models, you can go over to uh, Blender, which is a free 3D program with um, many, many, many capabilities. And you can use that to develop things like this, to build you know, with layers, models like this. And it's not that big of a file either. It's a lot bigger than, uh, than uh, Google SketchUp, but if you really, really like SketchUp and it's working for you in terms of reference photos, then uh, start using this. You could even make some figures in here instead of hiring and paying for models for your illustrations. And finally, I just want to show you an example of how I used Google SketchUp as reference. So basically, um, this is my castle build or my castle model for a castle piece that I had to paint. And I just started with some circles like we did you know, earlier in the demo and I extruded them or I, I pulled them up. I built these the same way, these turrets, and I show you how to make the cones. These are just inverted cones here. <clears throat> and then I drew a couple lines across with a pencil tool connecting this you know, front curtain wall or gatehouse wall to each larger turret. And then I just 
you know, use that polygon building technique that I showed you in the demo to you know, build up these these little battlements here and the portcullis. Then I use the color tool simply to you know paint that brown to indicate that it's a drawbridge. And then that's basically it. Very simple model. I lit it from the right. And then let's get rid of this. And I'll show you what I did <coughs> with that model. So eventually, that model became this piece. And this is an in-progress shot. Like I said, Google SketchUp is great for Photoshop, digital painting, and for traditional painting. This is gouache and watercolor. So you can see that that model really, really, really helped in terms of perspective. And you can change the camera angle and lighting in all sorts of different ways. This is another angle of it. So it really, really helped me understand how to paint that castle realistically. And then I changed the angle and put some ice and snow and all sorts of gory, snowy formations on that same castle design and produce another illustration for later in the book when the castle freezes over in the story. So again, that pretty much wraps it up. Google SketchUp is very easy to use. It's free. It looks like this, a little set of stairs in your dock. And it's not a big file. A lot of my illustration students use it. And um, I don't know if you saw the comment up there a couple seconds ago, a lot of uh, professional illustrators are using it for all sorts of different types of illustration, all different genres. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.